by implementing the right to be forgotten provision established by the Court of Justice of the P European Union, Google find initially limited the deindexation to national domains from where the request came, such as google.de or google.fr. And in a second moment, it expanded the, delist the delisting for a geolocational uh, pattern or, or model. Um, currently, the company has been arguing with French authorities about a possibility of worldwide deindexation. De and I would like to, to ask you, how do you see this di dispute? And when it comes to a removal of intimate images, as you were saying, uh, or the removal of copyright content, Google seems to have a different approach to that. Uh, to what is delisted and how is the jurisdiction problem is addressed. And somehow, by deeming Google responsible for making decisions about the right to be forgotten, the development of its standards became part of the company's own policies worldwide. So, how it relate with uh, the thing that I said before. And how do you access the decision of putting online platforms such as Google in the position of making such decisions? Okay, thanks. So I'll, I'll separate out probably the territoriality question from the um, private decision making. So Google likes to talk about its solutions of particular variants of its index as territorial. Um, they, they are in fact um, tailored solutions to particular geographies, but they don't match um, legal borders necessarily. Um, th so this, this is a, a bit of a... Um, lightning rod debate on a, on a bunch of other issues that Google is concerned about. In particular, and I think it, it is legitimately concerned about, how it can ensure that it um, complies with laws and, and rulings that are really addressing properly founda founded legal rights and other situations where the law could be abused and, for example, the public won't have access to information and so on. So Google is constantly aware of the broader implications of how it responds to particular legal requests. This issue, personally, I support a geolocalized solution to a lot of this, but I actually think that it depends again. One of the ways that we can penetrate this, um, what seems like border disputes, is to make it human. You know, that's something Google has been very eager not to do. We don't talk about the people's requests, we talk about borders and laws and clash of jurisdictions. And if we take it, we go back to the people, we might say, well, look, if your case is about revenge porn or if your case is about medical information sh that should have never been online, are you really telling me we have to have a geolocalized or local solution? No, I think we should have rights that um, are effective wherever you're coming from. Other cases, it may be that a local solution is enough. You know, somebody might be affected just by the proxim that information within a particular context. Think of a school kid, you know, and the way that that information from their schooling time can affect them later on. They may not worry about it later. You know, you're particularly sensitive to things at a certain age. So I think that if we segment it, we might find, um, and this is actually put in really nicely in a paper by um, two researchers from the Catholic University of Leuven, um, Brendan Van Alsenoy and, um, and uh, one of his colleagues, and they put the argument based on public international law that you can um, just, you need to look at the particular rights and that you would then get to a position where some rights are global and many are geolocalized and there may be somewhere country specific um, is appropriate. So that that's my way through um, that mess. I personally think that I understand the, p the position of the some of the European authorities, particularly the French, which currently has leadership of the um, European data protection agencies, to say, look, we're not gonna just take Google's very ver version of territoriality, we're going to look at real um, proper implementation. But I think that what a big problem for the DPA is, is that they, like us, don't really know what these cases are about. And I think before they start telling Google to do it globally, we need to know what those cases are. Because there may be some of them. I think that Go Google has no interest in delisting information that isn't strictly within the bounds of the law. But it would be nice to know, right? I mean, that's that's what everybody's concerned about. And I lay that firmly at the feet of Google. Um, in many of our inquiries, they say, we simply do not have this information. And I fail to see how the world's self-proclaimed organizer of information can't 
s do something um, which is between 20 odd examples on their transparency page and 500,000 requests, some, some more granularity. So the other question you asked in addition to um, territoriality was about this sort of Google being the decision maker. And this is really, I think- But X an example for any kind of private yeah. company exactly. making decisions. And this is such an interesting one for those of us who work in tech policy because Google on the one hand is saying, we shouldn't be the decision maker and on the other hand is doing this in a totally opaque fashion. They're not inviting in any independent authorities. They're just getting, you know, they're doing it. My personal view is they perhaps didn't know what they were getting into. At the beginning, maybe they set up a process, they didn't think about it too much and they were being a bit facetious and said, let's see what happens. We'll show you what happens when we delist. And then everyone was like, actually, this is good, you know, and now they're stuck with it. I think that there's um, there's a there's a really strong paper I read from uh, a Chicago Kent professor Edward Lee, who said that actually the scale of a lot of these requests, if we can if we can have clearer categories, and when you're dealing with decisions that don't have a subjective component, like revenge porn, like medical information, like a whole bunch of that sweep, that sort of you know in, uh, indiscriminate sweep that Google does, if we can have some um, specified categories, I think it should be private enforcement. The, the na nature of data protection law is if you collect the data, you have an obligation to do, to do so responsibly. And you have an obligation to meet the interests of data subjects in their own information, that it's properly processed. And that's including this reprocessing. A big distinction that I think some, that Google has been interested in, in muddying and many scholars have muddied as well, is that there's a separation that the actual persistence of information in the public domain is a separate thing from its proliferation in search results on Google. You know, Google is not the internet, Google is not the public record. The proliferation of information so that it's perpetually present is the specific issue that this Costea ruling is addressing. And the other suite of issues about information, public domain and, and so on are, are quite distinct.